Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. And in our ongoing story of the Jane Doe v. Clayton Eckert paternity scandal, the babies that never were, we've got uh, relatively large updates, to be quite honest. Sometimes a story is right in front of me, and I go, oh my gosh, that's a huge story. And one of those is today. Now, one of the relative accusations made against me is that my journalism's biased. I'm not sharing her side. And what we've had to, you know, in in some ways educate her new attorney in is the fact that we have reached out to her along with reality, Steve and others saying we would for sure give you the platform to share your side of the story. Uh, what we've learned though, is that there's a lot of selective story sharing on her end. She doesn't want to go do a cross examination of an interview. She wants to, you know, you know, share this, share that written. She lives on the internet where she can respond through Reddit and all these things. So either way, the door is still open for her to walk through and do an interview with me. I'd even fly out there for it, but um, I think that ship has sailed. I, maybe that was maybe that would not be a great uh, great for either one of us since she's sued and dropped her lawsuit for, of me for defamation. She's also called the FBI on me, a tip line, which we're going to share a little bit about that. So lots of updates to get into. It in some ways is all tying together. My goal is not to... Uh, I don't know, strike the ego of her new lawyer. It's almost to educate him. So there's an aspect of this case where she tells her lawyer something's 100% false. Uh, and she tells her lawyer who her lawyer tells my lawyer and I'm CC'd on it. So I'm going to share with you just a small snippet of that where she claims uh, she, there's a very honest and simple explanation to something uh, where Greg Woodnick may, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a whole thing. So just stick around for that. But we're going to get into the other aspects of this story. So it all kind of started with her lawyer calling me pond scum. Now, to be fair to him, he could have been saying that about Megan Fox, but it was probably about both of us. And that was after he said he looks forward to reading our obituaries briefly before throwing them in the trash where they belong. And then that was dirty deleted. Now, her lawyer and I, I think we're on good terms. You know, hey, hey you play hard to get in a relationship. I'm looking at you, David. I get it. I know how it works. It takes a David to know a David. I know what a little negging is. So he's kind of uh, ribbing me a little bit on his Instagram, or on his Twitter bio and he's having fun with it. And I get all of that. I just, I don't know if his, if the level of um, ethics he has to live up to within the legal world is different from mine. I'm going to take, I'm going to try to take what I consider my high road where I cover this. And I hope that he understands. I don't mean any personal insults to him. Like uh, in recent videos where we, you know, described maybe uh, the choice of words used to say she never, she sought medical treatment. She never received it. And then we provided evidence where she did re say she received it and this and that. So it's not to call out her new lawyer. I can't imagine all of the bandwidth that he has to go through to kind of filter through all of this. So either way, uh, pond scum or not, what we have learned uh, is I got this uh, from a fellow uh, journalist. Good morning, fellow pond scum journalist. And I guess that's me. I don't know. Those look like my highlights. Chat GPT, uh, AI really coming in strong there with some uh, Warby Parker glasses. Uh, but of course... Um, I uh, saw that I read this that uh, pond scum uh, algae uh, offers benefits when used as a fertilizer. So pond scum is a living organism. So I guess I'm not doing too bad. Uh, you know, it's rich in various nutrients that are beneficial for both plants and the soil. Use that on your Tuesday night trivia. Okay, so either way, uh, Megan Fox and that umbrella guy covered my story yesterday, and I wanted to just share several snippets from them. That umbrella guy. Uh, some call him that umbrella man, but I go that umbrella guy, uh, AKA tug for short, the old tugboat, uh, give him a little gentle tug, uh, with consent. He, uh, was, you know, in the forefront of the Amber Heard Johnny Depp case and was put on lists. I think him and I, the one thing we have in common is we were both put on the same list that, uh, was like anti Amber people, which I think is ridiculous. I think it was a case where people are just trying to get down to the truth. I, I always reject that claim in anti Amber, a pro Johnny. It's just like, how simple, how simple, uh, to just label people that way. But either way, he's, he's in the camp that's like, uh, people should not be believed. Uh, he lives on the side of like, provide your evidence. And then there's the a little bit more em em empathetic side where people say, trust, but verify. And I think trust, but verify is the response to believe all people. So I understand that that umbrella guy doesn't want to trust to begin with. He just says verify, which I think we can all live with. Verify. Whether you trust first or not, it doesn't matter. Just verify. 
Just verified. That's all we need to worry about. So his work and his defense of me has been so awe-inspiring. And I, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And guys, if anyone's watching my coverage of this case, you might take this personally as well. But like when we're threatened with cease and desist multiple times, uh, from multiple lawyers, when we're threatened with, we're going to go bankrupt because you're defaming my client and these and things, you're going to live in a homeless shelter, you're going to be on the streets. These when I'm preparing my nursery for my baby, who's three weeks away from its very viable due date, I, I know this angers other people when, when we have to respond to some of these threats. So when Umbrella Guy and Megan Fox come to my defense and say, no, Dave, you're doing the right thing. You're you're just getting, you know, whenever you're in the front of the race, you just get a lot of that mud thrown at you. You're everyone's drafting off of you. And people have wondered why why would Jane Doe be so interested in making me sort of the center of her sort of vitriol towards like, oh, and it's because we were the early people to cover it and get Clayton the sort of help he needed and make this a fair fight. I'm going to play three or four different clips from what they had to say as Megan Fox and that umbrella guy covered my story. And also, Megan, I got your gifts this morning for our, for our baby shower. Thank you so much. Uh, you got my wife a few things that weren't on her registry that she didn't even know she needed uh, from a beautiful little cotton muslin that that's, will be great in the summertime to a, uh, a, um, a uh, nursing sort of apron type of thing. Thank you so much. It is so kind uh, that you and hundreds of others and thousands of others have donated to join the Patreon and all these things. It's been, it's truly been the one of the only uh, positive aspects of this weird world we live in which is that i'm going through very real feelings with very real people and um and those that might not have ever known of me now are part of our team and i appreciate that uh at the very least collateral positivity we may call it so here's what they had to say he's litigation vices it's perfect <laughs> <laughs> dave uh, oh, I, Dave, Dave I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, Dave, these people come for you. You got a lot of support, man. You do. I know it's stressful stuff. You know, many of us have been in the eye of the hurricane. It's not fun. I get it, man. I really do. People don't, people don't know what it's like. You know, they catch camera to camera, but they don't catch those small moments. So I get it, man. But if they do come for you, like I said, you got a lot of people out there who support you, man. So on multiple occasions, Tug tells me through his platform if people do come for you and come for your covering of this, that we are there to support you. And that's good to know. You know, the you know, I've got plenty of friends that have been on Joe Rogan. I dabble in, you know, I, I'm, I'm a 12-year stand-up comedian. So plenty of my friends, uh, you know, work in the, that environment. And I know all the producers for Theo Vaughn and all these podcasts that reach millions and millions of people. The one benefit that Jane Doe has right now, and th by the way, this is not a threat. This is reality. The one benefit she has right now is this case is only being watched by 10 to 20,000 people. Theo Vaughn, Joe Rogan, they get their hands on this. A fellow comedian who's having his livelihood threatened by his, what I believe to be fair coverage of this case, there will be, like I said before, a war chest of hundreds of thousands of dollars of defense fund and also probably some of the biggest lawyers that would be willing to look at this and say, no, we need to protect YouTubers because I'll tell you what, the way that journalism is going with media companies, it's all going to be independent uh, journalists pretty soon. That's what it's all going to become. It's all going to be people leaving these platforms that are all dying and we're going to have to really support each other as we sift for the truth. Renditions of what was in the email that was sent to you. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> I mean, it's just open for interpretation. I mean, like I, like, like I was saying. <laughs> right. Since I, we can't show the picture, we, yeah. we just have to, we have to admit. All right, so I didn't, I didn't give them permission to share the email that was sent to me because I don't want to rile up the, uh, her lawyer. And he just said, Hey, could you not share it for now? And I said, okay, I'll give the general sort of vibe of what it is. And my only fear with that is if he feels like I gave the wrong vibe of the email, then it's like, well, that's why you share the original email because you don't want to give off the wrong sort of it's like well what did what did he really mean oh it was like conflating what he was saying and the only way to know that is if i shared the full thing but i think i think we're fine if you just trust me in saying that it was a long email where you know we don't need to get back into it i covered it yesterday but here's their response i mean there's always this out because she she's kind of like rewriting the story so that's what's important to know is that 
Uh, what she said happened in January is different. And I think it's fair to say she's rewriting the story. She's changed her story on multiple occasions. And from what she said happened in November, from different from September. And yeah, I mean, that, that, that runs you into a problem too. You know, one of, the, one of the things that will make you, what's that word again we were looking for? Oh yeah, liar. <laughs> that, yeah. Rewriting your story over and over again, that might do it for you. Then again, I don't know. I'm not a free speech lawyer that's that's uh, threatening to cease and desist anybody. So, <laughs> yeah, the, the idea is, is that credibility in the courtroom, you know, because I was I actually was thinking to my wife about this. I was like, have you ever caught me lying about anything? I'm like, I can't remember. I've made mistakes where I've regretted decisions, but lying, no. I think I think I possess what I think is the same gene Clayton has, which is like, for the most part, tell the truth. Now, have I have I lied as a people pleaser? Oh no, I can't come to your barbecue. I've got COVID. <laughs> yeah, who hasn't? Oh yeah, I got laryngitis. How come we saw you at the? You know, uh, sure, that's a different story. No, mom, I can't make it home for Easter. I've got um, my taxes are late. Whatever. Uh, my accountant's like, no, we're done your taxes oh i gotta refile them it's a whole thing uh so anyway uh here's the last clip you got to stick together because if someone yep. can just threaten a journalist and i'm not saying he's doing that but you know by sending an email to somebody saying hey i've sued these people he's made it clear that he's he he said that he's telling her to sue so this isn't th this wasn't stated in a in a vacuum you know, again, like I said, his posts. <laughs> Let me find it. Me I'm surprised. It. I didn't know Tug was I know this I involved. This I, I set it up, but I. Uh, so he's got where. I didn't pull it up for this. Here her goes. lawyer wanted to sue. I'm commenting because there is a huge amount of misinformation being spread unfairly about Laura. The purveyors of these lies will likely be sued in the future. So he's already said it. He's already fucking said it. He's already said that you can't have a pen. You, you can't have that speech. Why? Because there's a difference in free speech and speech about his fucking clients. It's a fucking joke, man. Wow. So umbrella guy does not hold back. There's a difference between free speech and speech about my client. And look, we understand, you know, uh, uh, her lawyer's getting paid by her, we think. Um, hopefully generously, I'm sure he's got good rates, uh, to defend her in, in all of that. So he's trying to poke holes and maybe rattle me. And look, hey, this is kind of the, I've dealt with a pretty wild amount of adversity in my life, things I don't want to get into, but things that when I look back on, I go, I'm, I'm actually pretty good at not getting rattled, um, you know, as far as been in situations. And you kind of calcify the, the, those, the, 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 the nervous system with stand-up comedy and performing where, you know, I've been heckled, I've had shit thrown at me, I've had uh, people follow me to my car, I've had other people try to shake me down, I've been hazed, I've been in in high pressure situations in sports and in life. And now this is another one where it is a high pressure situation. But at the same time, I've really thought about it multiple times and spoken with my wife and said, are we willing to spend our life savings defending the truth here, knowing that we are on the right side of it? And the answer is yes, not in a foolish way, like let's piss it all away, but knowing the internet in the world is big enough that people will if we're really needing it, come to our defense in ways of which we still uh, cannot fully comprehend. So I'm going to share a few other aspects. And by the way, thanks again. My deepest thank yous to Umbrella Guy, uh, to Legal Vices as well for covering this, Megan Fox and so many others in the legal world. So this is the image that got me an FBI call. She uh, reported me for um, uh, uh, revenge porn based on this specific image or, or what, what, one of these, it's an image when she was, I think it was when she had this cheetah bra on or whatever. So she's blurred out here because her face isn't important. What's important is finding out, um, what, what some are now saying are screenshots of a pregnancy video where you see distortion. Now, normally people were looking back in here trying to find distortion. Whenever we look at these things, first of all, it's very convenient to show your belly in front of a white door because 
all of the extra shade and outer glow and everything can be added in post. Her arms being up do something, whereas if she, her arms were lower, any amount of belly distortion wouldn't be able, you know, it would be hard to distort the belly and not the arms. So either way here, but I don't even know if she's distorting her belly. I truthfully don't know. Maybe, it, maybe it's being pulled out a little bit in Photoshop. I'm really not sure. But the interesting part is people noticed this. This is a clear distortion. You've got multiple uh, ripples going on here in what should be a... Per so if you look on the left, you've got a perfectly straight trim on a doorway. On the right, it looks like ripples in a pond. You know, a, maybe it takes pond scum to find this here. And very algae-like paint color, by the way, in her casita. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that door, though. We might need to get her a contract. Maybe she can't. Maybe no contractors will call her back to get that doorknob fixed. Uh, I digress! So either way, what the hell is this? You know, like this, if we're looking at evidence of whether or not she was pregnant, you know, her claims that this is revenge porn are hefty claims, but it's like none of, none of which, none of my content has body shamed her or any sort of way. She seems relatively fit uh, and in great shape for a, uh, you know, a, a young 30s adult female for all I, for all I could say. Uh, it, nothing, nothing about our cover says anything to do with anything but the belly bump and any evidence that the photo might be doctored. Why would doctoring up here be necessary? I have no idea. I have no clue how that would benefit her other than if she did run a app that possibly made her look more bloated, maybe this would, would be just like a, something that she didn't catch and we didn't catch. I truthfully don't know. Other Because you see right here on the other side, they have this ripple too when it's flipped around. So when she flips around, there's a ripple. So the ripple, so again, here's a ripple on the left. And then, and again, I'm kind of seeing this for the first time. And then when she flips around, so the ripple stays behind her. I mean, could this be a ripple from her lifting her butt up? I, I truthfully don't know. And by lifting her butt up, I mean pulling, pulling the image in a way just slightly to give it a little more... Uh, a little more bump. I truthfully don't know, but it was then shared again by a moderator, September 19th, 2023 and October 9th, 2023. If we are to believe these two images are real and unedited, Jane Doe's babies were growing between these two dates. This negates her claim she miscarried in September. And again, I'm not truthfully sure um, about the extent of... Um, you know, you could claim one... You know, I was bloated this day and I wasn't the other. Sure, whatever. Uh, but I think... I think what's interesting here, again, ripple on the left, and then on this, on this, uh, we don't see any ripple. But honestly, it, I have no idea about the shades, and I'm not an expert. We need those people that f you know follow the Kate Middleton uh, fiasco to check this out. But either way, the claim being, she says she miscarried in September. Uh, then why is she this much bigger? Why is she still growing? And again, we don't have answers to these, but a lot of people have asked questions. Uh, I've wanted to read a few of your comments before I get into what Jane Doe said. I know it's kind of a little bit of a lengthy video, but just a lot to cover today. We are expecting some more information to come out. Um, and so it won't be that quiet of a week, I, but I don't know. You know, I, trying, trying our best. I'm going to share Jane's side, which is the only thing her lawyer asked is share more of Jane's side, in which we go... Um, Absolutely. We'd love we'd love to share more of her side. Jane's lawyer's behavior is alarming. He sends Dave an email saying he is not threatening Dave, but then he threatens that he's drawn up a cease and desist, that he's had people he's fought against lose their bar license. He tells Dave not to share the email, yet the same lawyer is taunting Dave publicly. Yeah, in his Twitter bio, it says, willing to fight for your right to speak, even when you're 100% wrong, except for you, Dave Neal, JK. Um, look, I, I take that as flirting, and I'm okay with it. I heterosexual male flirting, some call it dick measuring. I'm okay with that. If you want to uh, a bump, bump genitalia uh, consensually, let's go ahead, right? I'm not, uh, this isn't my home field advantage court. You know what I mean? This isn't the sport I play. I'm not a lawyer. Um, I'm just so happy to be, you know, footing the bill in some ways with, in a community that the audience wants to know more about this and yet deafening, deafening silence from some major um, players in the community. Like how nice that, um, how nice that Nick Vial was able to have Clayton Eckert on his show and yet no follow-up um, when the shit is still very hot in the kitchen, you know, um, how, how kind, uh, what is this all about? Is he scared of the coverage when Jane Doe loses in court? I don't think so. Can Dave give this email to Woodnick to show J Jane Doe once again is trying to weaponize the legal system to threaten people into silence so she can get away with this? 
and move on to our next victim to do this again? I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure of the strategy of communicating with me, but I'm okay. I'm okay with like knowing. I think that I think whenever I can talk to people, I can build some form of empathy. It's kind of what you do on stage as a comedian. You immediately, especially like I had a show last night in a relatively hostile room uh, where I had to kind of like really bond with them real quickly. And I, I could find ways again, if I was rubbing elbows with her lawyer at an airport, um, uh, you know, uh, bar, I, we could find a million things we have in common. But in this case, he's being paid to represent his client and try to find any faults in what I'm doing here. Um, another one, love Dave, but he's a kind person that tends to ride the middle to not hurt Jane Doe's feelings. Those threats are being directed at him because he's a thoughtful person. Those hardened reporters calling out the lies and naming the predator would have zero shits to give about this lawyer's threats. Uh, okay, and my response was, I disagree. And, and I do appreciate the kind words. I think I hold the lion's share of content regarding her and I'm the biggest thing she can take out right now. I also think it's a weird dick measuring contest maybe rooted in some tribal man versus man BS. Either way, not a fight I want. So my, my whole point being... I think I don't want to give for any extra ammunition that I'm some horrible guy, which is why I've really promoted his justice and not her demise. I want her. I want help for her. I've said it before. If uh, you know, if we, if we could, uh, you know, if 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 she needed the right therapy, I'd be the first one to help with the donation. Uh, if that were the case, if if we could do anything to help her out, but uh, plenty in her circle, including very very close sources, seem absolutely not optimistic, very pessimistic regarding any change that could possibly come from this. Um, someone said, I think it's probably also has something to do with his wife being pregnant. Mine seems to just trigger Jane Doe even more. Someone said, I think that too. I think she's having this ad attorney go after him because she's so jealous of the fact Dave and his wife are about to have a baby. Here's my response to that. What she doesn't know is that folks like my wife and I, who have been on our own our whole lives, don't feel great fear from people like her because we've already built our lives up. So even if she tries to tear it down, we have the blueprints to our own happiness and she can't cease and desist that from me. So here we get to Jane Doe's response to something that went on. It involves my lawyer asking Jane Doe's lawyer about instances where Jane Doe has lied in the past. And the lawyer didn't know much about it. So one thing my lawyer asked was, do you know about the fraudulent um, ultrasounds? And he goes, yeah, yeah, we know about that. Okay, I don't know how, I don't know what they're, you know, I don't, I mean, how, how do they even, how do they, how do they even defend that? There's been no defense of that. Um, other than they say they still say her account got hacked, maybe there's been no response to that. Well, here we have her response to what I'm about to share with you. And in part, I'm giving this information as an update to her attorney. This was filed in the Greg Gillespie case. So there is an email that a law firm sent to Jane Doe that Greg Woodnick, who represented Greg Gillespie, small world, uh, believed was fabricated. And there really is no, this is the problem with this small court. Like there was never any, there's never any rulings it seems on this. So they kind of throw this out there. Uh, counterclaim of fraud. So they said that um, a reverse Google image search revealed that the sonographic images were identical to a sonogram found on a blog post from 2014. Upon information and belief, plaintiff altered the images by adding her name, date of birth, alleged location of the sonogram. And you might say, what are you talking about? This was the Gillespie case. I know most of you guys know this, but in the Gillespie case, she was alleged to have adopted all these things. I don't think they ever had a smoking gun because I think that case sort of just went away. And I think she was expecting that to, same thing to happen with Clayton. I think Clayton understood that they needed to get a lot of these things on record because they would go away. To further this fictitious pregnancy, plaintiff sent defendant a fabricated email exchange dated August 19th, 2021 and August 22nd, 2021 between herself and California, California attorneys, Allison Cordova and Joe Cotchett of Cotchett, Peter and McCarthy. LLP. Tony Stevens, believed to be a legal assistant at the firm, is also CC'd on the email dated August 19th, 2021. So I'm going to share these allegations and then I'm going to share Jane Doe's current response to that and then we'll talk more. Uh, why is this an important? Well, it it lends to credibility is, is what it is. And I'm happy to share Jane Doe's side. As I've told her lawyer, we are happy to share any information. Um, we've asked for an interview of Jane Doe 
um, because we think the best thing to do is to hear what she has to say, not what our lawyer says she said or anybody else out of her mouth. What is your statement now? How, how can we cross-examine certain of you know some of these questions? Because getting her written response doesn't really uh, lead uh, lead us to have the confidence because there is no pushback or cross-examination of that. And I think as a journalist, you would expect a journalist to ask questions that might, you know, not be quite answered. And we'll get to that. In the fraudulent email dated August 19th, Associate Allison Cordova allegedly emailed plaintiff in pertinent part the following with the subject line sent on behalf of Joe Cotchett regarding Jane Doe's pregnancy. So here it is on the top right. Very important stuff. And you tell me, lawyers out there, is, does this sound like what a lawyer would write to a client? Everything you told us about pregnancy tests and ultrasounds aligned with the timing you provided us. There were no past pregnancies on your record, and the three obstetricians you saw felt that pregnancy was very consistent with intercourse that took place between June 30th and July 1st. It must feel like you have the weight of the world on you, but I have no doubt that the jury will sympathize with your situation. The next step is to fill out the attached retention agreement. My first question is, would there even be a jury in this type of thing? Maybe, I don't know. But also, would a lawyer tell a client that they are sure that the jury will sympathize with them? Maybe if it's a lawyer friend of the family, I'm not truly sure. But this is the coverage that made her white hot angry at me. I shared this Literally uploaded it on the way to my baby moon vacation where we went south of India to the Maldives. Highly recommend. Uh, nice place. Uh, except the sharks are kind of, I don't know if you guys know, I saw a tiger shark. I almost had a bunch it in the nose. Get away from me. What are you doing out there? <sighs> you know, that type of deal. You got to show a tiger shark your teeth, you know. Um, <laughs> that's what, you're going to poke them in their gills. Uh, back off, misery. Cease and desist trying to bite me, tiger shark. Uh, maybe it was a bull shark. Either way, it looked big. I tell you what, it will cut. It was twenty-seven feet long and fifteen feet wide. Um, it was a big. I got it on camera. Uh, anyhow, so I uploaded this video sharing this, and she went cuckoo land on me. How, Dave? How dare you? I'm going to cease and desist. That must be a sealed case. And as we find out, no, it's not sealed. So what am I most guilty of? Is just sharing public records where I still redact her information and give her that benefit. Either way, persons who defended counterclaimant believe may have knowledge of information relevant to the events that gave rise to this action. Um, so Joseph Cotchett, Allison Cordova, Tony Stevens, and Patrice O'Malley of Cotchett, Peter, and McCarthy are believed to have knowledge of information regarding plaintiff's seemingly fraudulent emails purportedly authored by Joseph Cotchett and lawyers that have not worked at the firm for quite some time. So that's where it gets interesting. You go, oh, these lawyers aren't even at the firm anymore. Blank is believed to have uh, knowledge or information regarding alleged allegations plaintiff lodged against him in the past and alleged emotional distress and damages plaintiff allegedly sustained as a result and plaintiff's admission regarding her fabrication of of a pregnancy and sub subsequent abortions during the relationship in 2016. So either way, this is the information that le leads people to believe that she uh, fabricated these legal documents. Well, here's her response. This is Jane's lawyer's email to both my lawyer and myself. Because of the sort of heated exchange of like being called pond scum and being threatened with cease and desist. I've now re-retained my lawyer to have all communication. So you can imagine what that costs, but for those that have donated to the GoFundMe, I feel confident in putting my money to continuing to protect myself. So for her, you're only making money out of this game. No, no, no. I'm bleeding money. I'm bleeding money in responding to these things as a journalist. I don't know I don't know of many examples where the journalist has to have a lawyer because they're getting kind of I mean maybe this is maybe this is normal, I don't know. Either way, let's get into it. So here's what her attorney had to say with her responses. I just wanted to respond to a couple of things you said on the phone. First, you said Jane had faked medical records in other cases. I immediately called her and asked her about this. Her response, that is 100% false. I believe that would be the one we just shared that um, it, that they claim she has a fake sonogram. I haven't seen that, and I haven't heard from any expert sonographers to say that that's fake. We know in the current one we have video of her email emailing Reality Steve a copy that is fraudulent. 
she claims that that copy was planted there in some sort of deep state uh, thing by Greg Gillespie, who's hell bent on getting to her. So she thinks it's more common. And again, we we go with based we go with what's what's the common thing here. The common thing here is that there's multiple accusations from different men on different occasions that didn't know each other previously that say the same thing. Allegations that they say she made this all up. So that's what we're working with, folks. Um, I don't know, you know, any level of her explanation. Her response just says 100% false. Her explanation of this letter thing sounded pretty simple. Okay, simple answer is normally the right one. Let's have a cup of coffee here. She said there was a California attorney. Again, that's Joe Cotchett. Uncle Joe! Uh, she talked to you about maybe helping with the Arizona thing. This thing being Greg Gillespie and uh, this thing being the pregnancy she allegedly had but she never hired that person who was apparently a family friend the details were kind of unclear because i was driving and didn't have the ability to look at documents but jane and by the way i'm not blaming him he's relaying this on behalf of his client he you know th we've had thousands of people do the bandwidth and research here I, I do not blame her attorney for not being caught up on all of this let's give her attorney grace figure it out Call that law firm. Do your snooping. I'm sure he's got tons of resources in California, right? So figure it out, right? And then if you and then if you say, think she's absolutely lying, like you promised, you'll leave the case, whatever. And I've said all along, I want her to have good good legal rep because I don't want her to say, oh, I, you know, no, no one would rep me, whatever. The details were kind of unclear. I was driving, but basically said that the problem here is that Greg Woodnick misunderstood the nature of the relationship between the California lawyer and Jane. He thought the lawyer represented Jane when actually he, she did not. And according to Jane, she never claimed the lawyer represented her. Greg just assumed otherwise. Well, I mean, I think it's safe to say it, with emails like this, I think it's a safe assumption, right? To say, it must feel like you have the weight of the world on you, but I have no doubt that the jury will sympathize. The next step is to fill out the attached retention agreement. What? So, so <laughs> you ever have this where like, the more I read into it, the more I'm realizing how ridiculous this is. So according to her email from Joe Cotchett, Uncle Joe, baby. According to Uncle Jojo's. Uh, Uncle Jojo Bird. Well, they call him Jojo Bird. <laughs> Jojo Bird the third. According to Uncle Jojo Bird here. Oh, I'm good. I think I'm getting good at this. According to Uncle Jojo Bird, the next step is to fill the attached retention agreement. So I think it's safe for Woodnick to assume that he planned on retaining her. I think that's safe according to what we see right here. Again, we're going back seven, eight years. Um, let's go back. To, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, he thought the lawyer represented Jane when actually she did not. Based on that misunderstanding, Greg reached an incorrect conclusion. He mistakenly thought Jane was claiming to be represented by this person. And then when he contacted the California lawyer, that person said, no, I don't represent whoever. Thus, in Greg's mind, Jane lied. Hold on, hold on, hold on. In Greg's mind... She lied. she lied about hiring this lawyer. But the truth, well, isn't it funny that lawyer sounds just like a word? It gets kind of confusing. But the truth was that Greg just believed mistakenly that Jane made this representation when she did not. So the only fabrication was really just a mistake in Greg's head. This is really starting to become a common theme. Well, I guess you guys can decide if it would be common sense to think that the next step of filling out an attached retention agreement. This is what she used. This is what Jane Doe used to try to show Greg Gillespie. Hey, guess what? I got a lawyer, Uncle Jojo Bird, no, no, jo Uncle Jojo Bird the third, who says he's got all of this and he thinks the jury will sympathize with me, blah, blah, blah. Now, this reads just like an email from Jane Doe's mom that was sent to Jane Doe. Oh, you're, you know, it, it, it all reads in the same sort of fan fiction. That's how it reads. You tell me, all we need is Uncle Jojo to confirm he sent this email. We never got that, right? So then we go here. Um, we have that. And again, uh, Jane's lawyer didn't see what we just, I, you know, I'd be happy to send this over, but this is all from the Greg Gillespie case. So Jane's lawyer didn't see this, but here we have, and we just showed this. Uh, the next step is to fill out the attached retention agreement. Subsequently, subsequently, Joe Cotchett 
Uncle Jojo Bird III allegedly emailed plaintiff in pertinent part the following on August 22nd. I'm ready to get... Oh, no! Oh, come on! I'm ready to get started on this the second you give me the go-ahead. I'm always here for you and the whole family. Whenever you need me, and if you want me to go after this guy, I will make this case a top priority. Because I really feel for you right now. Allison sent me over the retention agreement in med medical files. Medial, they spelt it wrong. Typo, Uncle Jojo Bird. This may be very needy, and we could make this a public interest story. With the snap of a finger. In response, plaintiff allegedly emailed Joe Kotchett back on August 22nd, 2021, stating in pertinent part as follows. I think the best call is to pursue alternative service and try to get him twice. Once by posting on his house door and the other by calling his company and finding a coworker to serve him. I think you're right that you would be better at making those phone calls than me. I texted you the coworkers who we could ask to serve. This is shame. This is her trying to shame Greg Gillespie uh, by serving him at his work. Plaintiff's alleged email exchange with Allison Cordova and Joe Kotchett was emailed to redacted on August 22nd, 2021 with the subject line urgent copy of conversation with Joe Koch and contract along with a manufactured fabricated contingency fee agreement between plaintiff and Koch and Peter and McCarthy. Oh my God. Hold on. Upon information and belief, neither Allison Cordova nor Tony Stevens is currently employed at the firm, nor were they employed at the firm as of August 19th and August 22nd of 2021. I don't know how they know that, but um, you would think that would be pretty easy to confirm. You know, it's one, what, no, when did I work at Dairy Queen? Oh, July, summer of 20, 2002. That's kind of hard. But when it comes to contracts involving lawyers and their bar license and where they're employed at and all of that, I'm sure it'd be very easy to confirm whether they were there or not. And why is that important? Well, if they're on the letterhead and if and if not just on the letterhead but if she's actually claiming that allison sent these emails whoops you know and maybe she just listen how could this have happened that's what we're here to discuss right how could this have happened well you know i'm gonna get this guy i'm gonna fire off on behalf of i've had them represent me in the past and then when i got the letterhead i'll just copy and paste and smudge this out with adobe acromat or whatever she i mean you wouldn't think that this would be cross-examined by thousands of people online Believing that there was fraud in plaintiff's underlying complaint, undersigned counsel reached out to the purported attorneys in California who appeared to completely disavow any connection to this cause. As an email dated August 24, 2021, sent on behalf of Joe Koch, it indicated the firm does not represent plaintiff in this matter. All subsequent emails from undersigned counsel requesting to speak with, do with uh, Uncle Jojo Bird III about the seemingly fraudulent emails purportedly authored by Joseph Kochet, uh Jojo Bird III, and lawyers that have not worked at the firm for quite some time went without any substantive response. All right, well, this could all be cleared up. Uh, like I and, I and I'm not saying this to bait. I do believe Jane Doe's lawyer is competent. I do believe when he calls somebody, when he has connections, they pick up. Figure this the fuck out. No, I don't have the answers here. I am happy to share more of Jane Doe's side with regards to why she got an email from them and why she now says she wasn't represented by them even though there is what appears to be a fraudulent agreement between the two, a contingency agreement. I don't know much about that. Interestingly enough, and let's dismount with this. Wow, this is a long video. Please hit the like button. I'm going to be going live on Patreon after this. If you enjoy what we're doing, join patreon.com slash Dave Neal. Put a little bread in the tip jar because God knows we are paying our attorney to uh, do some of the uh, uh, heavy lifting here. I'm ready to get started on this the second you give me the go ahead. Again, allegedly from Uncle Jojo Bird's Law Firm. I'm always here for you in the whole family. Whenever you need me and if you want me to go after this guy, I will make this case a top priority. Shush. S-H-H-H dot, dot, dot. What the hell does shush mean? Who says shush? I wouldn't say shush. Kind of sounds familiar though, doesn't it? Shush. Shush. Chase. Chase J. Jones. Shush. Chase J. Jones is a character whom we have yet to verify is a real person. And also Chase J. Jones, along with other emails from... Uh, Jane Doe uses shush. I know it's a lot. It's a leap. Is it confirmation bias? I don't know. How often do you guys type shush in an email? This one only has two H's. This shush has three. Shush. Shh. We may be onto something. We'll be back with more content. Jane Doe, we are here. 
We are open for business and we are happy to hear about your contingency agreements and why you believe you weren't lying when you uh, shared, I guess, those emails from Uncle Jojo Bird III. More content coming your way. We're white hot today, baby, right after this.